My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. What I have here is the Heleberg Una. Today we are doing a setup and a first look at this tent. We're going over the features and stats. I just got this in and my testing is about to begin, but I wanted to film a video and get this on your radar. I recently did a poll about Heleberg and I think it was like 60, almost 70% of my viewers, it was over 5,000 votes. They had never even heard of this company. Because so few people know of this company, I'm going to change that. Recently, I filmed a preview of the Solo from Heleberg. This is the Una, and coming up soon is my preview of the Octo. Let's start off with a component breakdown. You have the storage bag, very good size. You have a draw pull at the top. I do have the footprint. We have tent poles. These are aluminum, nine millimeter, and there are two of them. Then we have the tent stakes. With the tent stakes, we have 12 of these. Then you have the tent. Before we set up this tent, let's focus on the tent body itself. As you can see here, the flies on top, the bodies down below, these two are connected. This tent features a fly first pitch, meaning that you take the poles, you set them up through the fly, the body is already attached to the fly itself. Let's say that you're out in a rainstorm. You can set up this tent, the outer gets wet, but not the inner, that's super important. With tents made in the United States, that's a fairly uncommon aspect, feature, but it should be much more commonplace. The overall setup process for this tent is super simple. You have pole sleeves that go crisscross across the body. Again, you have the two poles. There's no clips. There's nothing like that. This is very straightforward. It should be mentioned that a replacement segment of pole is included. The joys of pole sleeves. Pole sleeves are always somewhat of a pain in the butt. And that's to put the poles in and to take the poles out of. When you slide the poles through, they ultimately seat in these reinforced sleeves at the backside. Once you have the poles erected, they seat in these plastic cups. From there, you tighten them up. And as far as the setup process goes, that's it. It's that simple. As you all can see, the tent has been set up. I wanna go ahead and show you all a very cool feature. So check this out. So we have the fly, here's the body. I went ahead and I disconnected the body so I could show you all how it connects to the fly itself. This is the fabric inner. Heleberg does make a mesh inner, which is more suited for warm climates, warm conditions, summertime use, basically. While the company does claim you can use this year round, with a fabric inner, that's not necessarily true. These are specifically designed for wintertime cold weather use, and that's because of what they offer the users inside. These block wind drafts, they block snow, they hold in heat. Basically, this offers you everything that you do not want in summertime warm conditions. So you do have that option there. You can replace this with the mesh inner. It has a bathtub floor just as this does. There's a catch though. It's very, very expensive. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now that you've seen the body, I will go ahead and connect it to the fly. You have these toggles all over the place and they correspond with a ring at the top. So let's go ahead and let's close the door and let's go over the features of this tent. <laughs> Looking at the side of the tent, you can see that you have guy lines. You have one in each corner, which I do have currently staked out and that's because it's a breezy day. These are fully adjustable. Here's the other one. On the back side of the tent, you have an additional guy line down towards the bottom. This way you can pull the fly away from the tent body. Guy line. Guy line. This takes us over to the front door. 
There's only one door with this tent. It zippers down at the bottom, goes over to right about here. And from there, you can roll it back. Down on the door, you have an additional tie-off point, guy line, so you can pull that away from the body as well. Up above, you have the fly. This can be disconnected if you are in a dry location and you're not expecting rain. When you pull back the fly, you can see the top of the door. And you can use this with the fly on as a vent to help control condensation. Speaking of the door, you have multiple zippers here, so it can be unzipped from the top and also from the bottom. To put the fly back on, it's rather simple. You have a hook. It connects to this ring, just like that. And this is fully tensionable. Down at the very bottom here with the door, there is a toggle so that this door can be latched completely. Basically, it locks the door into place so that in strong winds, the material, the door itself can't be opened on its own. It's a nice feature and it's something that you will appreciate in really nasty conditions. You have metal draw pulls on the inside and outside for each zipper. The door is rolled back. There's the tent body, nice bright and yellow. Now everyone, pay close attention to the way that the doors open. You have a zipper down at the bottom, you have a zipper at the top. Zipper at the bottom. The zipper at the top goes all the way around. Check that out. Look at the size of the entrance here. It's huge. Take a look at the inside of this tent. Look at how big this is. You have the bathtub floor, very wide, very long, also very tall. One thing that you will notice here is that there's no pockets, no mesh pockets at all. Before we go any further, I wanna show you all something. So give me a second here to inflate these sleeping pads. Pad number one, done. Let's move on to pad number two. I'll try not to pass out. So again, everyone, the company claims this to be a one-person tent, but check that out. Two full-size sleeping pads will fit inside of this perfectly. They are wall-to-wall, -wall, but they fit. You can see how much space is left over down at the bottom. That's how big this tent is. This is a good point in time to stop and let's go over the stats for this product, including the dimensions. So the retail price of this is $740. This is not a cheap product. There's no doubt about that. What you have to keep in mind is that this is a four season, very strong tent. If you want the best of the best when it comes to a wintertime tent, that's what you will pay for a product just like this. Talking about availability for a second, just about every single one of Hilleberg tents are currently sold out thanks to the pandemic and shortages. Who knows when they will go back into stock. If you're looking for one of these, I would recommend looking for used condition. You might be able to find one. Otherwise, you need to hop on some waiting lists at your favorite retailers. And yes, there are waiting lists for Haleberg tents right now. With the Una, this is available in three colors. This is the sand color, but you can also find red and green. The company claims one person, as you can see here, you can actually fit two in there. You will be close, but you can do it. This is a freestanding tent. It has one door, no real vestibule with this tent. Now you can disconnect the inner body there at the door and pull that back and make a vestibule of sorts. If you need space inside of your tent to cook, that's what I would recommend doing. Also, if it's rainy and you need to get in and out of the tent without the inner getting wet, that's what I would recommend as well. Disconnect the body next to the door, pull it back, and you can get in and out with everything staying dry. This tent does not feature a vestibule, and you can see that when the fly is zippered shut. This is a dome style tent. It has a bathtub floor. You have the vent, which is also part of the door. This is part of the Hillerberg Red Label tents. As far as the labels go, the company has multiple. Black being the strongest tents imaginable. Red being the next level. And then you have yellow. Black label tents are for the worst of the worst conditions, and they're also the heaviest. Red tents are also extremely strong, but they're lighter in nature. Then you have yellow tents. And these are typically three season tents, and they are the lightest tents possible from the company. With this tent being a red label, it features the Curlon 1200 material. You have YKK zippers, the two nine millimeter aluminum poles, and you have 12 aluminum stakes. The measurements for this tent, 90 inches long, 39 inches tall, 43 inches wide. The company claims that this is the simplest solo tent that they make. It's fully freestanding, and it can be put just about anywhere on rocky shores, narrow ridges, dense forests. And while it can be placed anywhere, it also offers a ton of space. Heleberg also claims that you can use this tent year round, and I have to disagree as is, unless you're going to be at high elevations in very cool temperatures. Otherwise, 
That fabric inner, as we discussed before, is simply too hot for summertime use. Again, everyone, the fabric inner is designed to hold in heat to block airflow, and that's not what you want from a summertime tent. With a summertime tent, it's all about the airflow. You want to be as cool as possible. Nothing is worse in the summertime than being inside of a tent just sweating your brains out, begging to the gods for like strong winds to cool you off. I've been there, it's awful, you don't want to do that. So for myself, in the summertime as is, this is not something that I can use. It's just simply too hot, and I live in the mountains of North Carolina. In the summertime, the average temperature is around 75 degrees, something like that. We may hit 80 once or twice, we may hit 90 once or twice, but as a whole, it's very cool here, and still, this is too warm for me. Your mileage will vary. Maybe you like it hot. I don't know. But that is something that I want you to keep in mind. So for year-round use, I say no. But you can alter that. You can change that aspect if you can get your hands on the inner, the mesh inner. Now, unfortunately, those are very, very expensive. If you can even find them, $230. Consider those prices for a minute, everyone. Over $700 for the tent, $230 for the mesh inner. That's a lot of money. Now, what you're getting for that money is a tent that's going to last you a lifetime. You do get a lifetime warranty. You're talking about the best of the best materials, a tent that's super, super strong. It's a tent that can withstand thunderstorms. It's a tent that can withstand blizzards. Talking about blizzards for a second, I've never actually used a black label Heidelberg tent before. I've only used the red label and I've used them in the worst conditions that you can find here in the mountains. If I was going to Everest, I would want a black label. Otherwise, for myself, the red label works just fine. Before I wrap up this episode, let's go ahead and talk about my impressions of this tent so far. First off, the size of this thing is incredible. This is a very spacious tent. And to be honest, I was shocked at just how big it was when I set it up. It's one thing to read the dimensions online. It's something else to see it in person. I was under the impression that this was a smaller solo tent, but this thing is huge. Consider this, there are two person tents out on the market that are smaller than this. This is a luxury one person it can easily be used as a two person. The overall setup is very simple. Now, I did a very basic setup here. I kind of mentioned what I was doing, but if you need detailed instructions, check out the Heidelberg website or check out the Heidelberg YouTube channel. They've done an excellent job when it comes to the setup instructions, especially with their newest videos. Their older ones are not very good, not very detailed, but it looks like they are fixing things. They are re-releasing the setup videos and they're very detailed, so that's a good thing. Normally with a tent that I'm reviewing, I do a setup video, an instructional video, but with the Heidelberg tents, they've done such a good job on their own YouTube channel that I don't feel the need. Overall, the setup process is very simple. You do have the pole sleeves. They are a pain in the ass. Consider this, everyone. When it comes to setting up a tent, generally there's one of two ways to go about it. You can have pole sleeves or you can have clips. Now, each one offers you pros and cons, right? I'm a fan of pole clips as long as the poles are covered by the fly, but that's not always the case. You will find many tent designs that feature exterior poles. While the setup of those tents are easy, the con is that the poles are exposed, so they get wet, they can freeze. That creates its own problems. With pole sleeves, the poles are difficult to slide in, the poles are difficult to get out. So it really is a trade-off. They are protected, so you don't have to worry about them freezing getting wet or anything like that. Pros and cons, folks, pros and cons. But in the end, the overall setup of this tent is fairly easy. Entering and exiting this tent is very simple. Look at the size of the door. It's huge. Even if you have mobility problems, you're going to easily be able to get in and out of this tent. The bathtub floor is not so high that you should have any problems. The lack of vestibule is going to be a problem for some people, especially if they have two people inside of this tent. For one person, it's not a big deal. Simply, again, disconnect the body from the fly. They're at the door, pull it back, and you have a vestibule. And you could do that in rainy conditions, you can do that for gear, you can do that for cooking. That is a very simple solution to the lack of vestibule. The overall quality of this tent, based upon my observations so far, extremely impressive. I've always been impressed with Heidelberg tents and that continues to this day. I've yet to see a product of theirs where I said, hey, something doesn't look right, the stitching looks bad or something like that. I am impressed. I continue to be impressed with the company and their products. For the money, you should be impressed. I mean, 700 plus dollars for a tent is a ton of money. So for that money, the tent should inspire confidence. With this being the beginning of 2022, one thing that I'm going to focus on this year are the four season tents from Heidelberg, namely the solo tents. The one person, four season tents you are going to see a lot of this year. I've already filmed a video on the solo. I have the Una and also the Octo. At some point in time in the future, I will be comparing all three of those tents together so you can see what they offer. You can see which one may be right for you. And that's because each one of these tents are very much different. Make sure to comment down below. What do you all think about this tent? I 
really, really like this. I like the design quite a bit. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but the weight of this tent is right at five pounds. That's the packed weight. For a four season tent, that's the thing that you have to keep in mind. This is a four season tent. You could take this out into a blizzard and you will be fine as long as you know what you're doing. That's a lot of strength, right? And for only five pounds, two person, that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Anyways, folks, that wraps it up. Thank you all very much for joining me for this episode. I do appreciate you all. Now it's time to get this out and to begin testing it. Oh yeah. Bye for now. Take care. <laughs>